Hi there and welcome to the second video doing an op-amp review, a bit of an op-amp drill on different designs we've looked at uh, to this date in ENEL 283. So the first thing we're going to look at is the difference amplifier we walked through, but to look at how we use the differential amplifier we're actually going to have to apply superposition. So if we look here we'll start with an inverting amplifier. So here we have our 1K R2, 1K R1. We can see this will give us a gain of minus 1 on the negative input channel. And we have some voltage source in, shown here, and some source resistance, which we'll assume is quite low, quite negligible, much less than the 1K ohm input resistance. Now, instead of grounding the positive terminal, the V plus terminal in of our operational amplifier, we're going to apply a second voltage source. And we're going to see that as we apply superposition, what we see, let's work interactively with this amplifier, that here I have 1K V minus my R2, which I'll also label as 1K. Now with my input voltage, my second voltage, V plus, coming in, if I apply superposition, what I will find is that looking at the inverting stage of the amplifier, this path here can effectively be replaced with the seven and equivalent of that voltage source. And again, if RS is much, much less than R1, this example would hold where I have effectively an inverting amplifier from the standpoint of the V minus input and if I apply superposition and ground the V minus input then effectively I have through a very small RS my V plus input. So I can see that applying superposition I can see that the output here is going to be equal to V out is going to be equal to V out plus minus V out minus. Now the only problem I have with this expression is that when I solve this directly because the gain for an inverting and non-inverting amplifier are different I can see that I would have say in the case of the previous example a gain of 2 for my positive inputs channel and a gain of minus 1 for my negative input channel. So in terms of determining the difference between two voltages I have unequal gains and that's not desirable. The fix for that, and it's a relatively elegant solution, is to use the same values of R1 and R2 in a voltage divider on the positive input channel as seen here. The resultant is, with these voltage dividers now in place, is that I have a gain expression that reduces down to the following arrangement. I have R2, R1, the same values I have here, V plus, V minus, and V out being equal to V plus in minus V minus in times R2 over R1. Very elegant. The only challenge I have with this design is that our, our analysis and the rules holding true for this design are very very dependent upon our source impedances, our RS values or our ZS values, being very low. And this may not always be the case. One solution that I could look at would be to, to do the following. And these are drawn very small because I'm running out of space here. But I could follow or proceed each input with a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 1. And we refer to this as a voltage follower little hard to see here. I had done this in class where this is now VI minus, this is VI plus. That's a great fit. I'm just going to move this over a little bit so it's a little easier to see. So now I have an amplifier which is independent of the source resistance of V plus and V minus. But I have another problem with this amplifier and that comes in to varying the gain. If I'm building a fixed input amplifier this works very well 
but oftentimes I'm interested in having a variable input amplifier and I'm also interested in having an amplifier that has a very precise relationship between R1 and R2. One fix would be to make R2 variable, but as you can see I have to make two resistors variable in my circuit here, and that isn't something that I necessarily want to do. A more elegant fix for this is found by looking at the instrumentation amplifier. So here what we have, conventional difference amplifier as we designed it previously, where the gain is a function of V1 minus V2, sorry in this case V2 minus V1 as it's, as it's shown here schematically, times R2 over R1. Ahead of this I have a pair of non-inverting amplifiers, but they share one common resistor, this RA. What we'll see as we go through this description is that the gain of this entire set of amplifiers can be solely dependent upon RA. So we have our conven conventional difference amp shown here, and we have the two mirrored non-inverting amplifiers. If I look and I wish to derive an expression for the gain for this amplifier, what I'll see, the current that flows through RA can be defined as IA, the current IA can be described as VI2 minus VI1 over RA. How can I make that claim? Let's look back at our original schematic and we see again if we make the assumption and it's a valid assumption that the virtual short is in play in both the amplifier at the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen, V1 input is also going to appear at this point here on this amplifier. V2i, the input on channel V2, is going to appear at this lower negative input because we have a, a virtual short in each one of these amplifiers. So IA has to be equal to the voltage difference divided by RA. Now here's where something becomes apparent to us as well, is that IA also has to be equal to the voltage V out, V out 1 minus V out 2 divided by the sum of these three resistors. So I can also say that V O 1 minus V O 2 is going to be equal to IA times RB plus RA plus RB. Now I previously had an expression for IA, didn't I? I can say that VO1 minus VO2 is going to be equal to, I'll just label it as V1 minus V2, my inputs, I'll use a 1 here to indicate input, times RA plus 2RB, since I'm assuming those resistors are equal, over RA. This voltage, these two voltages in turn are appearing at a difference amplifier, so I can rewrite this entire expression for the output of the entire amplifier shown here as V out, my final amplifier output, is equal to V1 in minus V2 in, and I may have the polarity wrong on these, I'm just going to check. So I can rewrite this entire expression as V out is equal to V2 in minus V1 in times 1 plus 2 times RB, assuming those resistors are the same value, over RA times R2 over R1. And I have a very elegant gain expression here which can be varied solely by varying RA. Just again stated here, we have a circuit where the output gain can be varied at a single point and there are some other advantages which go beyond the point we are right now in our analog design class. This instrumentation amplifier circuit actually tends to correct or even out for any variations in our resistors. We'll look at the at an example in the lecture where I'll work through this example briefly before Monday's class, just looking at these points. But from here I want to move on to the next topic, which are actually decision-making circuits. So we want to look at decision-making circuits involving op-amps. The first and simplest 
circuit we're going to look at is going to rely on the open loop gain of the amplifier. Let's say I wish to know if I have a known good 1.5 volt battery, a double A battery that I show here, and I wish to compare a box full of other batteries to it. So here I'm going to put my device under test, my other battery, to see if the voltage is greater than this value or less than the, va the value, to see if it's good or bad. If I rely on the open loop gain of the op amp, what I'll see is that if I apply a device under test which has a greater than voltage, I'm going to see plus VCC approximately, again typically a little lower, or what I would refer to as V-rail, or if the device under test is less than my test sample, I'll get minus V-rail very close to the minus VCC value. And this is actually our open loop comparator. This can be a very useful circuit if we need to know, again, the difference between two voltages and based on this output being either plus V-rail, again, if this were 12 volt and minus 12 volt supplies, we would expect to see approximately plus 11, minus 11 volts here. So it can allow us to make a decision by detecting or having a circuit that responds according to those voltages if we need to make a simple comparison. So the open loop comparator is very useful in a number of instances, but let's consider another problem. Let's consider that we wanted to build a thermostat for controlling the furnace in our residence, either our home or our apartment, and we're relying on a forced air machine which requires a gas valve to open, we turn on a burner, it heats up, air blows. So let's assume I'm going to set my thermostat for 20 degrees Celsius. If I wanted to use an open loop comparator, then as soon as the temperature is roughly one one hundredth of a degree above 20 degrees Celsius, the thermostat is going to say turn the furnace off. If the therm thermostat then detects the temperature is 19.99 degrees Celsius, it's going to turn the furnace on. So our furnace is going to sit there and it's going to be constantly cycled on and off, and that's not good for a lot of electromechanical devices. What we want is some delay or some range of decision where we may say turn the furnace on when it's 19 degrees Celsius and don't turn it off until we reach 21 degrees Celsius. And that's the essence of that is a decision with a delay or a, a band gap in it, and we refer to that as hysteresis. And we can achieve hysteresis in analog circuits with something called the Schmidt trigger. The first thing to be aware of is that with our Schmidt trigger, hysteresis band is always around zero volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a voltage divider. Notice I'm drawing it somewhat differently, where this is R2, this is R1. But now I'm going to bring the feedback back to the positive input. And this is important. So this looks very much like a non-inverting amplifier, but notice that our input and outputs are reversed. So this is V in. Let's assume I start with some voltage here, and what I have here appearing at the output is minus V rail. So minus 11 volts is showing up at the output here. Now what voltage is showing up here on the V plus pin? Well, it's going to be minus V rail times, in this case, R1 over R1 plus R2. Let's make this a 10K resistor, and let's make this a 1K resistor. That's going to work out to be 11 times over 1 plus 10, so that's going to be minus 1 volt. As long as Vn stays more positive than minus 1 volt, the result is I'm going to have minus 11 volts showing up here at the output of my Schmidt trigger. Now let's change Vn to be minus 2 volt. Minus 2 volts is more negative than our positive input of minus 1 volt. The net result of V plus minus V minus open loop is that my output is going to switch. And my output is going to go from minus V rail to plus V rail. When I go to plus 11 volts, my ratio stays the same. But now what I have is I've gone to plus 11 volts. So now or I have a comparator that is now switched and it's going to remain at plus 11 volts out until minus Vn goes more positive than plus 11 volts, in which case it'll switch. Let's look at how this looks diagrammatically. So here we have a graph 
and we'll see that if I have a more negative input, you know, to put two marks here which represent my V threshold. So if my input is negative, what I'm going to see is that I will approach, have a negative V rail, until I reach the point where I go more positive with that input than the threshold. Then I'm going to switch down to this point until I go more negative than V rail and the same would have hold tr held true if I approached from a more positive input and ideally within our Schmidt trigger we're going to stay within this band which we're going to think of as the hysteresis band.